Hey, good morning, everybody. Yeah, this is, uh, believe it or not, these are my thoughts on the nostalgia critic being, uh, being put into retirement or the nostalgia critic's um, semi-retirement, if you will, kind of like basically not being used as much anymore. You know, I, you know, I can I can respect what Doug has done, and I can respect the fact that if he feels you know he's done what he has to do with the characters, and that's fine. Um, I do appreciate the fact that he has acknowledged that yeah, the character will be back every now and then, maybe for special appearances or episodes or retrospects or whatever. Um, but. But honestly, but honestly, um, uh, I think that, you know, I feel Doug just basically wants to have some time to do other things. It's, to, to me, it's kind of like the same situation with James. You know, when James, you know, James, when he, when he did the Anger Video Game, it was basically twice a month, as far as we know, maybe three times when he started, I don't know. But it was amazing, as far as I know, it was twice a month. And then he decided, you know what? I got a lot to put into these things. I'm going to just do it once a month. And it gave him enough time to do other stuff. You know, it gave him time to work on, you know, if he wanted to make the, the episode of the AVGN bigger and more spectacular than it's ever been. And, you know, then, you know, that, you know, then so be it. You know, if he felt a game was worthy of having this kind of a, a review, or this kind of episode, then so be it. And, you know, with Doug, I kind of get this feeling that eventually down the line, he is going to bring the, the critic back. And I'm not talking about bringing the critic back just for special occasions and all that, and special occasional reviews. I'm talking more like bring him back on the fact that he'll probably follow the same vein, if you will, or the same... Uh, direction that James went, and that's to um, basically, you know, do the nostalgia critic maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, or something like that. So that if he has to do a review, he'll want to make sure that he's got the review set and ready to go. Oh, and it's worth him sitting down, doing the review, maybe doing more with the review. And I feel that that's why we're going to be seeing the nostalgia critic more often than than you might think you might think because you know to me you know you don't just walk away from something or you don't just put a character you've created into semi-retirement and pull them out every now and then you know which i'm sure he's planning to do but i have a feeling that fans are going to want to see the critic more often i mean i mean here's the thing when fans do see the critic's character, or Doug's critic character, Doug's nostalgia critic character, they're going to want to see more. They're going to ask to see the character more. They're going to want to see more of it. They're going to want certain things answered, like with Rob's situation, you know, as far as the uh, storyline with the character, as far as the, <laughs> the character's world goes, if you will. So, um... So, um, I, I definitely feel that um, Doug, it's going to probably take time. But I have a feeling before we know it, we're going to see more nostalgia critic than this, more of the return of the nostalgia critic character than, you know, Doug is talking about right now. I mean, this is just what Doug wants to do, and I understand that. He wants to have time and space to do some other things. I mean, like they said, like he said, you know, they bought a building finally, a studio if you will, for them to do a lot more in. And that's great. But I feel that just because they bought the studio doesn't mean he's going to fully quit the critic. Critic, you know, like he said, he's not going to fully quit the critic, but I have this feeling that after all these special appearances and everything, and after he has enough space, he's going to realize fans are going to want to see more of the critic. And I believe, in my honest opinion, that he's going to probably go a route similar to, to James and to what James did with the nerd character, and let's do a critic episode maybe once every month, or maybe in his case, once every couple months, once every two months maybe. You know, like, if he did an episode, like, tomorrow, if he did an episode, like, say, 
this Tuesday, and then two months from now, come like say December, not December, but two months from now, like say November, he can do one then. Like, like the holidays are coming up, he could do a holiday themed situation with the critic, and that's you know, and that's about it. So, again, it would again it would open the door for him to still do what he wants to do, but. I, I think, in a sense, that we are going to see the critic again, not just with the specifications, but I feel he is going to be back to doing reviews. It's just going to be something like, on a, it's going to be like an every other time situation. It's going to be like every other month or every other two months or something like that. So it opens up the door for him to continually do what he wants to do and pursue. <laughs> you know, so. But, you know, as far as him putting it into semi-retirement, you know, you know, I, I will say this, I do appreciate everything he's done with the character. I do appreciate the laughs he's given us with the character. Um, you know, he's really done a, a great job with the character. There's no doubt about it. He's done some great crossovers, not just with James, but with people within his own website, like Louis Lincara, uh, Lindsay Nostalgia Chick, Joe Vargas, Angry Joe. Um, Spoonie, Noah, um, he's done, you know, with people we didn't even think he'd probably find the crossover with, but finally did, because it's being his final run, I guess. Uh, Joe, J.O. Uh, Otaka, Otaka, uh, in, you know, the review. Uh, Cinema Snob, uh, Brad, you know, uh, Todd and Todd in the Shadows. Um, just just a few other, you know, just the list goes on that he finally crossed over with. And I'm kind of glad about and I'm kind of happy he did that. But I also feel, you know, that there's a lot more for him to do and that's why I feel he's going to be back every, that sooner or later, probably around next year I would guess, he's going to bring the crate back for reviews. On an almost every other every uh, every month or every other month occasion, it's like like he'll do one once a month or once every one once every other month. That's what I feel is going to happen because you know it opens the door, like I say, for them to continuously do what they're doing. So um, now, for anybody that's wondering, maybe it's because perhaps he's got a ring on his finger, and maybe he's ma married now or he's engaged, aged. Um, that. Uh, let, let me say that that does, I'm not talking from experience, thank God, but from what I have seen with other people, okay, from what I've seen with other online personas that do things like this, well, when marriage comes in, it does change you. And basically how it changes you is you have to start scheduling yourself around what's more important than what you're doing. Like with James, you know, he wants to do, continuously do his uh, critic, his nerd character, he does that every month. But he's also scheduling it around the fact that he's got other projects. But more so, I think, the scheduling it around the fact that he and his, his around he and his wife's marriage, in my opinion. So, um, the same can go for like a, a company like the, you know, a company, but a group, uh, 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 um, like the Off the Rope show, for example. You know, there are times that certain members of the Off the Rope show can be there, and there are times certain members can't be there for reviews and predictions and all that, so. But uh, honestly, you know, because honestly, it's because some of them are married, like Tasteless Tony's married, married, and I think, you know, route I think is so but again it's all about the fact that you know sometimes they can work it in around the scheduling and all that and also probably because they have job, other jobs as well but the point I'm trying to make is this you look at them and you look at the fact that sometimes Tony's not in a review at times which he most times are is there are times that he's not it's usually because of marriage and other commitments and the thing is with Doug, if that is the case, then it would be part of the reason why he's leaving and kind of putting the nostalgia critic into semi-retirement so he can focus more on his 
uh, personal life now as well as his as well as what else he wants to do but again it goes back to what I said I've got a feeling that Doug's gonna follow a similar route as James and either it's gonna be at one one review every month or it's gonna be one review every other month I got a feeling he's gonna come back to do them but like I said it'll be like either one every month or one every other month so I don't think we've seen the last of the nostalgia critic character but for everything Doug's done for us with the character so far, I applaud you, I thank him, I applaud him, I thank him, and I'm sure everybody here on the YW, here at the YT, at Blimp, at Facebook, you know, at Daily Motion, they thank him too, so, um, that's my thoughts on it, um, again, I'm, you know, I'm happy that he wants to move on and, <coughs> and do some other projects, and kind of put the critic to the side, put him into semi-retirement right now. Um, but I'm ha also happy to hear that we will be seeing the critic again. And I've got a feeling with these special appearances and all that, that it's just going to lead to maybe a scenario down the line, maybe next year, in my opinion, that we might see a scheduling of one nostalgia critic review every month or every other month. So, uh, But that's all I'm going to say. What are your thoughts? Give me a you know, comment, respond down below. And I'll talk to you all later.